people, man. Well, how crazy has it been watching all these dudes from Dagestan oh, my just God. invade MMA I knew it. and dominate? I knew it. Because in wrestling, they've been around. I was like, when I, when I was about to start fighting and when I started fighting, I said, man, when these Russian dudes from these regions start to come, it's going to be a problem. Because you know how good they were as wrestlers, right? What's going to happen when these guys come into fighting? Right. Learn strikes. And it's the same thing. You know, yeah. we were talking in the back about like Alexander Karelin. I looked at that picture and I go, hey, that was a bad dude. Just a monster. Monster. A monster. Monster. And there have been a many of them. Bolvasar Satyev. Uh, all these great Russian athletes that are just crazy. There was one guy that beat me in the Olympic semifinals. His name was Hajimurad Gutsalov. We're lucky that son of a bitch didn't fight because he would have beat everybody. And John Jones included. Every one of them would have got the ass whooped by that dude. Really? He was good, bro. He was. He wrestled me at the Olympic Games, and he beat all of us, though. He beat me. He beat Kel Sanderson. He beat Kyle Snyder. He beat all the best Americans for a long time. He wrestled for my Olympic cycle all the way to Kyle Snyder, who won the 2020 Olympic Games. That guy beat him. This dude was so fast. He was so good. I brought him in to train with me for John Jones. My strength coach told me he would try to break him. He said, Daniel, I would try to break this guy. He goes, I would give him all of my workouts. He goes, and then I would add just to try to see how far he would go. He said, no matter what I did, he never stopped. He never got tired. And he goes, he always wanted to do more. He never questioned anything. And that dude, that's why the dude was like a six-time world champion, Olympic champion, everything. He was the best, man. And we're just lucky he didn't fight because all of us would have no accomplishments. He Any was that good. video of this dude? His name is Gatsalov, G-A-T-S-A-L-O-V. He was good, man. He was so fast. He was so strong. His motion, his movement. These dudes were, I knew that if guys like that started fighting, they would be a problem. And that's exactly what they've become. I mean, look at him. This is the guy right here. It's him. We were training. This dude just hit me with all kinds of stuff. I actually, like, I mean, and, and we're sweating too. He just never stopped, bro. The guy was just tremendous in everything he did. So I would have to set my mind every day going into the room like I was about to wrestle in the Olympic Games because I knew how hard it would be to try to go with this cat. Then he would be beating on these dudes in MMA. He'd take the, against the wall like it was impossible to take him down. And mm. we, and I mean, but look at this though, Joe. Everybody would just watch. Dude taking me down. They <laughs> <laughs> got the UFC cameras. I'm like, yo, cut that, cut that, cut that. I'm like, cut it, cut oh, it, cut this it. This is some wild scrambles. Yeah. Oh, you got him? I got one, but that was like, that's probably the only one I got for a month. <laughs> 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 and then at times I thought he might be letting me. I'm like, yo, are you letting me score, man? Because I wrestled you in competition and I ain't never scored. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, he was just too good, Joe. I mean, he beat me in Olympic semifinals. He beat... Everybody. Did you ever talk to him about his interest in MMA? I, I, I asked him. He was like, I don't really want I want to wrestle. And now wow. he's the head of the Russian Wrestling Federation. He's the wow. coach now. So I said, dude, <laughs> sometimes I'm embarrassed to say some of the shit I do. But my kids on my wrestling team, this team now has all my youth club kids. They all wrestled for me in middle school when they were seventh and eighth grade they were doing their homeschool year so reclassifying is a big thing in sports now where if you and i are supposed to graduate in 1998 we will reclassify to graduate in 99 bro i took those kids when they were in seventh and eighth grade and i sent them to dagestan for a month whoa they took all of their schoolwork and they went to dagestan and, and moscow for a month wow like eight are nine kids with two parents. Wow. I sent them to Russia, bro. That's crazy. The fact that their parents actually listen to me is crazy because they're like, yo, you're out of your mind. We're not sending our 13-year-old kids to Russia. They sent them, bro. Wow. We put them in some big jackets, and I said, hey, I know if we want to be the best, they got to be by these guys. And so we sent them. And Khabib had them in his gym every day. 
Wow. He bought, and Habib is a great guy, right? He bought hotels for him. He'd feed him. He said, just get him here. And, dude, they trained for a month. They told me, they said, Coach, we practice with you. He goes, in Dagestan, it's training. Because it's in the morning, it's in the midday, and it's in the evening. You're training all day. Long practices. He said, that, these kids told me, Joe, that they do about 30 minutes of gymnastics before they start practice. Gymnastics. For the flexibility and body discipline and body control and everything. So they're flipping and doing all kinds of stuff before they ever got to wrestling. Wow. They're working, they're operating at a different level, man. That's why you see Mahachev, like, being who he is. Mahachev is crazy. Bro, the way he adjusted... The Volkanovski in the second fight was pretty special. Yeah. Like the, the use of that left leg, left Just leg to left the body, kick, left kick, and then left the high kick. kick. <sighs> way he Nuts. set that up, man, it all the possible endings to that fight that you could have seen. Never thought that. You never thought, like, <laughs> high kick KO. Crazy. And we thought when we saw Habib, right, that was about, that was the complete version of a Russian fighter. Mm -hmm. You see Islam, and he possesses all those same skills. With the striking. With the striking. So what about yeah. the next one? What yeah. about the next one? Because there's going to be another one. Yeah. What about the next guy? Right. Right? It's like they're just getting better and better. And now that they know that these guys from that region are, like, you, if you're a kid and you're growing up in that region, now you know, oh, I, I can follow that same path. I can do MMA, right? Yeah. It doesn't have to just be wrestling or, or, or uh, they do uh, Sambo. Yeah. Which is... As perfect a base for mixed martial arts as you can find. Yeah. Because they're punching and kicking each other and stuff already and grappling and doing everything. So it's a very good base. It's it's a little weird that they're it's wearing weird. a jacket. They're wearing the gi. And yeah, shorts. they're wearing the gi top shorts. But and it's like shoes. at least they're Some of them you and I agree. Wrestling is the foundation. Yes. Because of the training and everything else. But in terms of what closest with the 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 kind of striking or at least the playing of the striking in, in Sambo, that's as good in terms of preparing you for mixed martial arts. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's awesome. I got that I got that little rant you go on about wrestling. That plays daily in my school. Oh really? Yeah. That they love that. Oh, the kids awesome. love that. Because that's the truth. It's the truth. If you want to build a strong foundation, even just as a human being, wrestling is where you figure out how tough you are, mm -hmm. how much you can push, how much you can deal with discomfort. I think, no one trains harder than wrestling. I think everybody should wrestle, and I think everybody should have some sort of fight in their life. One. 